All right, guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're having a great week. Uh, so I just got a text message from my friend Ryan that we're going to be taking off to Washington, D.C. Uh, for a couple of nights, the beginning of November. And I've always wanted to photograph D.C. I've never even visited, so I'm excited to go and... Uh, to go and check out some of the monuments and the history and try my hand at a new style of photography. I've never really tried uh, urban photography or architecture photography, so I'm excited to give it a shot. Um, this video is going to be all about how to plan a trip like this. Uh, how to choose where to go, uh, where to shoot, when to shoot, and uh, basically just what apps and tools I use to help me plan a photo shoot. So uh, with that, let's make this short and quick as we can. Let's dive right in. Uh, the first thing I want to go over is how to choose a destination. Uh, now this one's pretty subjective. Uh, pretty much you're just going to pick a place that you want to visit or that you've seen photos that you like from, a place that you have a desire to go photograph. Um, some people get really crazy, and I've done it myself, is to even just hang a, a map up on the wall and, and, and throw a dart at it. And wherever the dart lands, you're traveling to. Um, that one's kind of risky, you might not get good photos, but it can be fun to just take random chance and go explore someplace new. Uh, unless you're really good at darts, and then you can choose where you want to go again, but I'm not. Uh, so next thing is when to go. Uh, you want to scout things like, like the weather, uh, the season, uh, what events or festivals are going to be on, going on where you're going. Uh, if you're really into astrophotography, then you want to uh, look into the phase of the moon and plan your trip around the new moon, uh, more than likely anyway. Uh, or meteor showers, uh, things like that. Whatever you're looking to photograph, make sure you line up uh, when you want to be there with where you're going to be. Uh, those two are pretty generic, and I can't really give you any examples of how I'm planning this trip with them because I got a text message that said, hey, let's go to D.C. on these dates, and it's kind of out of my control to choose where or when. I just kind of got tossed in. Uh, the rest of this, I can give you examples of how I am personally scouting these spots. Uh, so let's go into uh, how I find location spots once I've, once I've chosen a, uh, a destination. Uh, so we know we're going to D.C. I know I'm going from November 2nd to the 5th. Um, so the first thing I did is get online and look for festivals or events that might be worth photographing or checking out while I'm there. And there's a couple little things going on, but nothing that really piques my interest photographically, and it's a photo trip. So I'm just going to skip right over those and do some of the touristy stuff, take some photos, and enjoy it. Uh, so the first thing I do when, I'm, when I pick a location is I go and I start scouting online. And there's, uh, I basically just go and start scanning different apps and websites for photos that I, I personally like or photos that I think show a spot that has potential. And I'll save those into galleries. And what I'll do is I'll throw those up over on, oh, other side, this side of the screen for you. And uh, we will, I'll show you exactly how I find those. But So the first app that I use is called 500px. This is a online social media uh, community for photographers specifically. Uh, it's not like Instagram where it's just a bunch of people with smartphones. It tends to be a little more professional, a little better photos. And if you're not on 500px, then I would definitely consider making a profile and at least exploring it. It's worth having just to be able to look at other people's photos. There are a lot of really good photographers on there that make me look like a nobody uh, because I am a nobody. However, um, it's still a really good tool. Uh, so I'll show you this quick screen overlay of of what that looks like uh, and the gallery that I'm showing you is actually my specific Washington DC gallery that I've gathered of photos that I like. Uh, disclaimer, I did not take any of these photos. These are all just scouted of other photographers and collected into a gallery that I think are my favorites from DC. Uh, then I'll go to Instagram and I'll search hashtags, which is super easy to do. Uh, I'm sure most of you are familiar with Instagram. If you're not, just create an account and just go to search, type in what you're looking for, and it works just like a Google search pretty much. Uh, people have tagged their photos with different hashtags that, that represent where they were taken or what they're of. So again, I'll toss an example up on the screen that shows you searching for Washington, D.C. and a couple of the things you found. Uh, again, I found some good photos this way that I like. And the third thing that I'll do is I'll just do a, a global uh, image search through Google, Google Images. Uh, basically, that pulls from the entire internet. It might pull stuff you've already seen on 500px or Instagram, but it also might pull stuff from photographers' personal websites or media publications, just anywhere on the internet. 
So it's always did good to do a Google image search and to to scroll through that. So again, I'll throw that up on the screen here. And these are all being done on my smartphone. Um, Instagram has to be done on my smartphone, to my knowledge, still at least. Uh, 500px in Google Images, you could hop on a laptop or a desktop or any internet device and check those out. So what I do is after I, I finish Online Scout and I collect a, uh, a bunch of images that I like, I go through and I research those images to figure out where they were taken, what they're of, what time of year they were taken, to figure out if they line up with what I would be able to do. Um, and then I, I use an app called the Photographer's Ephemeris. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, everyone just calls it TPE. It's a uh, paid app for your smartphone. I think it's $10. I couldn't tell you. I bought it about five years ago. Uh, I'll have a link to that in the description. And uh, you can play with that. But what this allows you to do, and I'll throw it up on the screen as well, is it allows you to look at a map, essentially satellite imagery, and choose the spot that you want to take your photo drop a pin on it and then it will show you the uh, the compass headings or the directions where sunrise, sunset, uh, moonrise, and moonset will all occur for any given day in the future. So you can figure out which direction the sun's going to rise in relation to your, your subject for your photo, which really helps to uh, just plan your photos and have an idea what things are going to look like. So what I do is I usually take this and I go over each location and I see how the sun's going to hit it or uh, basically what it's going to look like at different times of day based on uh, what the light's going to do. Um, and I'll use this to make a list of different places that I could shoot at different times of day. So I'll, I'll put together a list of stuff that would work for sunrise, and then a list of stuff that would work for sunset. Uh, what I'll also do is I'll also look at what the weather could be. And I'll put together a list of things that could work for bright sunny days, you know, where you don't want to be photographing outside necessarily because the sun is too harsh. Uh, you might have a list of indoor locations. There's plenty of architecture and indoor shooting you can do in D.C. Um, or you might uh, have a list of stuff for a rainy day or a list of stuff for a clear night where you want to shoot the stars. Uh, I'm not sure you're going to see any stars in D.C. It's a pretty big city with a lot of light pollution. But other destinations, that may be a big thing. I had a list of uh, clear night shots when I went to Acadia last month. Or this month. Um... So pretty much, that's the photographer's ephemeris, and I use it as a cross-reference to uh, dig through the spots that I found online that I've liked from other photographers, and come up with my own photo ideas for those spots. Uh, I'm sure it's all been shot a hundred times. I'm not looking at the other images to copy them, uh, per se. I'm just looking for inspiration and spots that make good photos. Uh, because when you want a trip like this, you don't have weeks to scout the area and get to know it. You've got to go in with a, a list of shots or else you're just going to waste your time walking around looking for stuff. Um, so as the trip gets closer, what I'll do is I'll check the weather. And then uh, I usually just use the Weather Channel app. But any weather app that you use in whatever country or town or city you're in, it will be fine. Uh, you just want to look at the weather and get an idea of when it's going to rain, uh, what mornings are going to be partly cloudy and you think you're going to have a good sunrise or a good sunset in the evening. Uh, and, you know, what days are going to be bright over or bright sunny days where you want to be indoor shooting or out of the sun. Uh, so you're going to take that information on the weather and you're going to apply that to the lists you just made of different conditions and you're going to use that to make a temporary or a, a tentative itinerary for your trip uh, so that you have... You know, okay, I know Monday morning it's probably going to be raining, so I'm not going to get a good sunrise, but I know that it might be a good time to go shoot uh, the fall foliage or in, the, in a wooded area because I know that when it's overcast and rainy, wooded areas tend to photograph well. Um, and this all takes a little bit of experience to figure out what times and what weather works best for certain photos, but it really helps you to scout and, and know what to expect. Um, so pretty much once you have these lists and then a tentative itinerary put together, uh, for me at least, my plan is pretty well complete there. Um, I'm always sure to, to stay flexible, uh, and I don't ever want to be locked into that itinerary. If I find something that's better once I get there, I will absolutely change my plan and go shoot it. I'm not going to, you know, lock into this and say, okay, it's supposed to rain Monday morning. I cannot go and shoot a sunrise if it looks nice. You know, if the sunrise looks nice, I'm going to say, screw the original plan. I'm going to the sunrise photo that I already have scouted, and I'm going to shoot it. But the nice thing about having these lists is that when you get quickly changing weather or conditions are different than predicted, 
you're not scrambling to come up with a photo idea. You already have lists of things to go do uh, for all those conditions. So, you know, say you wake up and it was supposed to be a beautiful sunrise and now it's pouring rain. If you didn't do this planning, you'd be like scrambling. You'd be mad. Your photo idea is ruined. You got to scramble to go find an idea to shoot on a rainy day. But now you have these lists. So you wake up and it's raining and you say, oh, you know, that sucks. But I have this list. I have these four spots that I said I was going to go shoot if it rains. And so I'm just going to go do that. It helps you to quickly adapt and overcome and not waste time once you're on the ground at your destination. So these are just some tips that I had for traveling uh, and planning photo shoots in, in places that you're not familiar with. If you guys have any other advice that you could show me, I'm always learning, always looking for new apps and tools. Uh, so I'm always open to suggestions. Go ahead and throw uh, in the comments if there's anything that you think I should check out or if there's anything that you want to add to this video. Um, I hope this helped you guys out and taught you a little something, uh, and I hope you guys have a great day.